Hey everyone, this is Gwen and welcome to my sewing and DIY channel. I typically create designs that are retro inspired with a touch of whimsy and in this video today I'm going to be showing you how I made this shift dress with a cute petal collar. In this video I'll be going through my process of drafting and sewing the petal collar and sewing the shift dress together of course and throughout the video I will also be sharing some of the things that I've learned about working and sewing with painted fabric. So let's get right into it. This video is informally a part two of my previous video on painting my own fabric. In the last video, I went through my process of painting the fabric and talked about making a dress with clean, simple design lines. So the main design feature of the garment would be the painted fabric. But I also felt like just sewing a simple shift dress would be kind of boring. I thought long and hard about it and I just felt like at this stage, it didn't make much sense to me to sew a second item on top of the shift dress so instead of sewing something extra i decided to just go big with the theme of flowers and just fully commit to it and add this petal collar design that was popular in the 1960s so if you have watched my other sewing videos you know that i usually add some notes on my drafting process for my sewing patterns but this time i'm actually leaving it out and it's primarily because drafting a shift dress with the french dart is pretty new to me and to be honest, I wasn't even sure if it was going to work out at the beginning. Here's how I drafted the pattern for the petal pieces. I started off by figuring out how wide each petal needed to be. I knew I wanted 5 petals on the front neckline with 1 petal right in the middle, which means I would have 2.5 petals in one half of the dress. So I measured the length of one half of my front neckline, divided that number by 2.5, and the answer, or rather the value, became the width of each petal. With that number, I started just kind of freehanding and drawing the petals on a copy of the front of the dress. Once I was happy with how the petals were looking, I cut the um, half petal in the middle out and then I drafted a full piece with seam allowance added to the sides and the top. To make my shift dress, I cut the front and the back dress pieces on the fold with my painted fabric and also cut facing pieces on the fold for both the front and the back. When cutting through the painted sections of the fabric, my regular rotary cutter had no issues cutting through the fabric paint. But as I started working with this painted fabric, I noticed a couple of things about the fabric. Bear in mind, this is just my experience with this specific fabric paint brand. I don't know if it's the same for other brands because I have never used other brands before. So as you can see, the fabric has pretty much maintained its drape. It's not too stiff. I can kind of fold it pretty easily and it doesn't become like crispy and it doesn't look like it's gonna peel. Now the wrong side of the fabric is a little bit more interesting. So the wrong side of the fabric is the side that was in contact with the plastic film that I used to wrap my table to protect the tabletop. It's got this slightly tacky kind of a texture. Like if I were to squeeze it together with my fingers and then released it, you can see that it sticks to my skin just a little bit. Now because of the tacky feel of the underside of the fabric, I decided that adding a lining with this sheer white cotton fabric would be a good idea just to make the dress more comfortable to wear. So I started off by sewing the main body of the shift dress. I actually intended for the dress to have a center back zipper but I had a massive brain fart as I was cutting the fabric pieces out. And I ended up cutting the front and back pieces of the dress on the fold, which means that I'm going to have to have a side zipper instead. I stitched the darts of the dress together and then I attached the front and back together along the shoulder seams and the right side seam. Because I cut the fabric wrong, I will be attaching a zipper on the left side of the dress instead. Here's an important thing. Because the French dart is on a curve and they're kind of bulky and don't sit flat, I trimmed them as much as I could to the tips using a pair of pinking shears and then I pressed them open before sewing the rest of the dress together. So I'm pressing the French dart open right now and what I'm realizing is that 
it feels weird pressing over the paint on the fabric. I've got the iron set at cotton blend, which is basically the third highest heat setting for this iron. I am pressing the underside of the fabric and it just doesn't glide as easily as the iron plate gets in contact with the paint. I'm going to give it another go from the right side of the fabric and see how things go. There is a little bit, you know, of like a, I guess friction would be the word that you could use, but yeah, it works. It works. And there's no extra paint on my iron, my horrible iron. Okay, let's see if you can hear this. See that squeaky sound? Oh, that's the steam now. Now let's get the petals ready. With the pattern for the petal collar that I drafted, I cut 14 pieces of the fabric using this deep red fabric I have in my stash. Each petal is made up of two pieces of the fabric, so 14 pieces gave me seven petals all together. Instead of having petals all around, I decided to just have five petals on the front and then one on the back just next to each of the shoulders, meaning seven in total. To make the petals, I stitched two petal pieces right sides together. They look like they're all connected already and that's only because I did continuous stitching and didn't cut the thread in between each petal. After that, I trimmed the seam allowance with pinking shears to about one eighth of an inch and turned it right sides out and pressed it with the steam iron so the petals would sit nice and flat. When pinning the petals to the neckline, I started by pinning the first petal to the middle of the neckline, making sure that the middle of the neckline is lined up with the middle of the petal. I also made sure that every single petal was either touching the edge of the neckline or going over it. Once I was happy with how the petals were lined up against the neckline, I basted them in place with my sewing machine. What you're not seeing here is how I had to unpick the stitches and do it all over again because I didn't manage to get the sides of the petals to touch each other the first time. Unpicking is a reality that is not often seen in videos, so if you actually appreciated this little dose of reality from me, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. After that, I started getting the facing ready. I applied interfacing to the wrong side of the facing, then sewed them right sides together along the shoulders and the sides. Then I sealed the raw edge along the bottom of the facing pieces with zigzag stitches, turned it about a quarter inch to the wrong side, and sewed it down in place with straight stitches. And now it's time to attach the facing and the lining to the dress. First, I placed the lining together with the dress, wrong sides together. Then I put the facing together with the dress, right sides together. It is quite a number of layers and while putting all three layers together, I made sure that the shoulder seams lined up and the neckline was all even. Then I sewed all three layers together along the neckline. Then I turned the facing over and understitched it close to the neckline. Okay, now at this stage, I also realized that I should not have sewn the side of the facing where the zipper was meant to go. So I had to unpick the stitches before moving on to sewing the zipper. So I was really hoping for this to be a straightforward project. But of course, it didn't end up being so straightforward because... I did not do a lot of planning beforehand. Definitely if I had cut the pattern out right and made it a center back zipper, I feel like it would be easier, but now I have to do a side zipper. But I am really close to the end of this project. I'm just uh, about to insert the zipper and then I'm gonna hem the dress and I will show you how it looks. So after sewing the zipper on the left of the dress and hemming the dress, I also finished the armholes with bias tape to give it a nice clean finish overall on the inside. I'm like super proud of how this dress has turned out. I drafted it using my body sloper and like I said, I was not sure if it was going to work out and fit me the way I wanted to and it did. It fits me just the way I imagined it. So I'm super excited about the potential projects that I can start embarking on with fancy fabrics and 
and a clean, simple design like this. So let me know what you think about this retro 60s inspired shift dress with petal collar. I hope I didn't disappoint with this final design that I decided to go with with my DIY painted fabric project. And leave a comment to let me know what you think about working with painted fabric now that you've watched me work through an entire sewing project with it. Thank you so much for watching my video and giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, do subscribe to my channel. I mean, you've made it this far for this video. You probably will like my old videos and future videos. I will see you in the next video for more sewing, DIY, and perhaps a little bit of fun. So I wore this dress to the store the other day and the cashier also noticed my phone case as I was paying up. And he said, oh, your phone cover goes with your dress. I'm like, yes.